through the magic of time travel, I am coming to you from January 2022 and introducing some content that I filmed in December of 2021 because that's how content planning works and front loading your work does. Hello and welcome to Recording by Bianca. I'm Bianca and this is my channel and today I'm going to be talking about my finals sewing project thing. So I know that I had my vlog earlier that talked about all the projects I was doing for finals and I know that you've seen already one of my projects I was doing in the lead up to finals, my Star Wars knit shirt, my final dress itself which was the final for my flat patterning class has three components, three different parts that I'm going to parse out in their own videos so that you can see how I patterned the bodice, the sleeve, and the skirt. I just thought because they all are working off their own pattern blocks, like their own slopers, and they all involve different things, it would just be easier to do that. And also maybe more searchable, like if somebody doesn't want to watch me build the whole dress in one, like if someone just wants to see me make a puff sleeve, then there's going to be a whole separate video for just the puff sleeve. Which like, Makes sense like I wouldn't want to have to scroll through an hour and something a video just to find one specific construction thing. So today's video is going to focus specifically on the bodice. The majority of the process that you're going to see is really the patterning of the bodice because it involves a yoke and gathers and tuck darts. There is a little bit of video and explanation around the construction but this is way more about the actual how do you pattern this thing than the construction. So if you do have questions about the construction, I can do more info about that and those little things. In general, this was meant to be much more of a focused project on patterning and I made the videos a little bit more focused on patterning than construction. That being said, I still want it to be really useful. So if you have questions about it, I can also like break down some of the different terms and the different techniques that I used in a different video if you have questions. Hopefully this is useful. Again, I will be working in half scale at first so it's easier for me to film over top my um, table. Then I just cut quickly to like me doing full scale cutting out and it's essentially the same. I note the one difference that I made to make it a little bit more equal on both sides. Um, but it's really no different. It's a, that was a personal preference over something that I did in the flat patterning small stage. So don't stress about that. This project was super fun. If you look at vintage patterns, like I'd say that I was very inspired by 1930s, 1940s kind of patterns that had really similar kind of yoke up top or yoke up bottom. That was a personal choice for me because those silhouettes really easily fit the parameters of my assignment. <laughs> and also um, I feel like they look a lot better on my body and my form in terms of where my waist is. It's kind of where those waistlines were and like I can talk about waistlines and imaginary waistlines and real waistlines at some point in the future but basically in fashion school in your patterning things the slopers that you're making are to your true waist versus like I guess what like the fashionable waistline would be so I know like fashionable waistline we think of like drop waist like the 1920s art deco but I'd also argue that there's interesting things around waistlines even now, but you know, in the 90s, it was like the low, low rise jeans. And then we had like the high waisted jeans, which was actually going towards your actual true waist. Um, your true waist is just like that smallest part kind of um, on your torso, that middle part, um, which is where in the patterning books, you're making your slope or two, your, your top stops there and your bottom starts at that point. So with that knowledge and understanding that like the 1930s and 40s patterns really fit that waistline already I was really inspired by that and again I feel like my body looks a little bit better in those because I feel like it doesn't try to artificially elongate me um because I'm a short person and I feel like a lot of uh, different imagined waistlines uh, try to go for a longer torso and I just don't have one so um, the other thing about flat patterning is that you can make it fit you. So I started off with a pattern that fit me and then add the style lines and different stylistic choices that I knew were going to fit my body and the shape that I had drawn out on the pattern. If you need a review of some of the patterning things that I go over, check out the video um, in my description because I do give an introduction to basics of slash and spread and just patterning techniques. What else? What else? Let's get to the patterning of this bodice. So. 
start off, I had my sketch on my iPad and I have that nearby at all times. And you'll see it kind of in the corner and I'll try to zoom in when it's relevant. But I'm going to start on my bodice and I basically had already cut out little half scale slopers that were for the bodice front and back. If you don't know what slopers are, I went over these in another video, but when you're doing the little, what I'm doing here, which is um, slashing and spreading or slashing and whatever, just make sure that you cut enough so that the fabric can nicely overlap and not do the little wrinkle like it was looking like before. So I just cut in a little deeper so that it wouldn't have a wrinkle and it said lie flat. So for this, I'm making a yoke bottom and that basically means I need to decide where that yoke, that belted looking thing was going to go. You can put a yoke on the top of a shirt. You've seen me do it in my pumpkin shirt, um, my pumpkin linen shirt, and you'll probably see me do it again. But it's just a thing where you make like a, I don't know, the technical term, but you make a separate kind of piece on the bodice area. You can do a yoke, I guess, on a skirt too. Anyway, you can see here that I marked off the waistband, and so I made sure that I closed the dart for that waistband yoke area so that I could make that into its own little belted area, whatever you want to call it. And then I put the little notches in, which are the little straight lines that you see. It's one straight line in a couple places so I know how they're going to line up. For the back, it's going to be two lines. That's how you notice back from front. It's the notches are one versus two. And then I decided to try for the top since I have tucked darts and everything and then some gathers. The way that I did this was not the way I did it on my final pattern. I added fullness to the side, which was just straightening up that line that you see that I'm adding paper to. And I was using the middle bodice line, the center bodice line as the kind of straight of grain. Okay, I'm just going to add something to the side. So it's about like a parallel line. So I put those pieces aside to work on the back. I'm going to do really similar work. And you can see here that like the tuck darts, you can't really tell where they are yet because tuck darts, much like pleats and other things, those kind of come in the next step, which is making like a working pattern, if you will, because this doesn't have seam allowances, right? This is just the sloper, the basic piece that you're working with, a basic block that you're working with. Once you actually get into the working pattern is where you're gonna actually add a lot of these things. So one day I'll hopefully do a video about the differences in a working pattern from like pleats and gathers and all those things. But for now, just know that the front is what's much like the back in terms of the modifications you're making to the sloper itself. And uh, I will say too, a note here is that for this, I did this in half scale and I made like a little half scale mannequin thing that I'll show you in a bit. But my big thing for this was I did add some fullness to this top and bottom to that top piece, not the yoke, but the, the bodice top and the bodice bottom. And I, again, added fullness to the sides here, but it didn't give me a ton of gather when I made the half scale little doll clothes, essentially. So what I did was I did a kind of equal fullness, about an inch in the middle. So I used that midpoint, that kind of quote bust point on the front and then the kind of mid back point on the back and just did about an inch of fullness to give myself a more tucked darts on the back to have that be more even and then be a little bit more room in the chesticle area just because I didn't want it to be skin tight. So this is how you're going to start off making any kind of modification to this dart that I have. And it's a little weird thing that you've probably seen me do before. I feel like I did this for the Morticia skirt, but I measured equally out and equally in to this little little V that we're doing. You're not going to cut all the way through, although that can happen. Paper can just tear as well. And then the way that you're going to make this become a thing, whether it's a tuck dart or any other kind of style wing of your choice, is you're going to tape this down, have those little lines be at equal places. You can see I'm going to finagle it a little bit as I go. Yeah, just you want those to be as even as possible. And I know I'm doing this in half scale, so like it doesn't matter as much. Like for full scale, it will matter 
but to make sure it works you need to do this so I'm just marking off that little corner there where that paper touches because what I'm going to be doing for the half scale to make the tuck dart spacing is going to be actually after I've added seam allowance and everything and I'll show you in a second but I'm just going to transfer all those lines I'm going to blend that bottom line a little bit um and then I'm going to start adding seam allowance so for half scale obviously you're not going to be doing full one half inch oh yeah and I then I added because tuck dart is a dart that doesn't go all the way down right like it's just partial and um it's only part of it's going to be sewn down essentially so what I did was I marked what the center line was for each of those darts and you're essentially just making an incomplete dart aka you're not going to be sewing it down to this to the point that I have down there not to the bus point not to any of that and you're just going to be sewing it to itself um if that makes sense think of it it's like a little tuck a little tuck dart um and then those little dots are like because it's a patterning class those are little things that you'd indicate to your seamstress that those are things that are going to be touching so they would know to sew those circles to be touching like they would for a dart anyway so i'm just marking out and you can see i didn't complete those and that's because you're going to come back to it so just going to add that seam allowance for full scale it's going to be half an inch so it's just a quarter of an inch here which is um and you see me incorrectly put seam allowance in that middle seam which is not correct um i believe i do correct that though later on um and then you use your french curve to put in these curved lines as nicely as you can use the inside of your French curve for half scale patterns I found that's very very helpful for gathers you just mark gathers um technically I would have put those lines those notch lines farther apart so a seamstress would know that that was gathers they would understand like those notches need to touch but then everything in the middle needs to be gathered up um and then put in my sleeve seam allowance Again, use the inside of that French curve to get those smaller lines. For the collar for this, it doesn't really matter as much because I'm not going to be turning this down. But for a full size collar, it's going to be quarter inch. Yes. Yes. Quarter inch. Seam allowance because you want as little fullness there as possible. Um, I don't think I sewed this down in the funnel for my half scale. I didn't have to do a half scale, by the way, for my class. I decided to because then I wanted to do make sure this actually worked so I sewed it up in half scale as well and I did a muslin so you know choices were made choices were made when do I realize that that middle seam allowance I don't need I know I realize it at some point I just don't know when oh boy oh boy so smart to think ahead and do half scale but not smart enough to be like you know you don't have a seam there anyway so for darts and things like this you're going to just leave a little bit extra at the top like you just saw me do and what you're going to do is mark those because those lines need to touch you're just going to fold it um and then you're going to cut after those lines meet and then eventually you'll see that like the little internal area that I'm cutting off like they make kind of a V shape you can kind of see it um, but yeah that's how you deal with darts and such you're going to leave extra room on your paper for your working pattern and then when you fold them that's when you're gonna have that you can see right there and then I just mark the piece and I mark center front and hopefully I remember <laughs> to cut off that center front <laughs> um no guarantees I'm pretty sure I did I'm pretty sure I did for this I know I did for my final pattern because there's no way that V up front is going to actually fit but you know things happen and um I'm not saying you have to be like me all the time I am just sharing with you my knowledge again why did I do that like why am I giving myself seam allowance there I think I was just it's the pressure it's the pressure pressure of finals um but I know I cut that off so Ignore in video Bianca making mistakes. 
anyway, again, I'm adding seam allowance to this front yoke. I also should have made sure that I added grain line um, notes so that I know what the grain line will be. Um, and so that, again, theoretically, your my assignment is, you know, making a pattern with all these industrial marks so that people, if I ever work in an environment where I'm going to make patterns for other people to use, that they would know, hey, this is uh, what you're supposed to do. Oh, is this when I realized it? Yes. Oh, my God. This is so great that I actually filmed it. it I filmed me being like, why did, am I doing? Why did I put a center seam allowance? I'm so glad I got that. Like, you have that moment right there of me going, what am I doing? Okay. Anyway, so this doesn't really need anything extra on it because I'm not adding fullness. I'm not adding any of that stuff. I actually could have probably done a little bit of contouring on there which is like in fashion school we go over it as far as just um you know you're pulling in stuff and then this is a very very speedy me doing the back it's the same although the back actually does need that middle seam allowance so here we go um but i didn't want you to have to suffer through watching literally the exact same thing just mirrored um and then I am cutting this out. I marked the grain lines and I am cutting this out of some little scrap quilt fabric that I had. Um, I think I was going to make like a cute little like kind of bell costume from Beauty and the Beast. And then I never did. So now it's just scrap that I'm using for projects. Like me making a very speedy half scale pattern. Um, or quilted things like my I believe I used some of this for my Brambley Hedge Tea Cozy and you can see here the full half scale lol full half scale that doesn't make any sense but the actual fabric after I set it up um I think it looks pretty cute I uh, and yes you can see definitely I didn't have as many gathers along that yoke bit as was in my drawing which is why I decided to add a little bit more fullness to make it actually match up to my drawing since that was the alignment and yeah making tuck darts in half scale was a test of patience and precision but I did it so that I could see how it would look and then here's the back obviously uh, this dress form uh was just me made so it doesn't fit the slopers that I have for this but one day maybe I will correct this in some way but you can see the back and you can see I did do some tuck darts there and I decided it's it was uneven so that's why I added one more dart to the back so that it would match up slightly better okay you can see me uh on the floor doing this so that's basically the fun of me making this into a full scale pattern I had to use my floor because I don't have enough room on my table for a lot of these pieces and for the roll to be on. So just, this is just really fast footage of me doing all this on the floor, but literally it is the exact same, but full scale. So the other thing I did that was not needed for my finals assignment, but I did anyway, was I made a muslin of my bodice area because yes, I tested in half scale, but then I mentioned in my full scale version, I did add some equal fullness. So I just wanted to double check that it was going to do what I wanted it to do. My issue with the half scale was that the half scale just didn't seem to have much gathers. And that was part of my final design. Um, there are a couple of things I could have done. Again, contouring that yoke area maybe um, to then give it more, um, you know, inherent excess fabric up the top. But didn't. Instead, I made a muslin. And I'm really glad I did because I feel like it made me confident in the pattern that I made versus cutting to the fashion fabric and being a little <laughs> worried that uh, I didn't actually attain the thing that was needed for my final assignment, which is terrifying. But uh, actually, if you notice, this is a brand new sewing machine and I at some point will talk about it more, um, but I was gifted this amazing new sewing machine that does so many things that I didn't know sewing machines could even do. Uh, it, uh, it's amazing and it, like I haven't even touched the embroidery part of it because it's like a sewing machine and embroidery machine so I haven't even like really worked with like the hoop and like done anything yet but I'm excited too anyway so this is really cool because I was practicing practicing my tuck darts and you can see here I just click some buttons to make it go back and forth and then I clicked a button and it cut the the thread for me like I don't have to like manually cut the thread anymore it does it for me and then I can just 
recenter and keep sewing. You can see I press the button to go back and forward and then cut the thread. The future is now. Anyway, this is all to say I sewed muslin and I'm very excited about my new machine. Okay, I have made the muslin. I have now tried it all. Um, I think it's gonna look better in my fashion fabric, obviously, but hey, it fits and I'm excited about that. So, yay, yay. I like didn't sew the point as good as I could have, but I will probably do that way better in my final version. Okay. Um, I think that's all the energy I have for this morning, so I think I'm going to rest and, um, then maybe get to my fashion fabric. Okay, I've cut out all of my pieces and now I need to mark them. So that is going to take up my Sunday night. And then Monday, I hope that I have time to put it together. I will have one more video though because I just want to talk about how I think this is gonna really look pretty. I think this fabric weight and everything is gonna look real nice once these are these are gonna be tucked out so they're gonna be tucked in a little bit and I think it's gonna drape super pretty once it's all put together. So here's where we are. And here's more footage of me sewing things. This fabric I will say it's rayon. Yes it's a kind of appropriate for the era-ish that I was going for but uh, I will say for anyone doing this in a rayon or any kind of thing that starts to fray a little bit, surge the edges of your fabric so that you don't have to worry about that later, like I now have to worry about because now it's fraying on the inside. But you know what? There are ways I can fix it. Just as a reminder for everybody else, please uh, surge the edges, the raw edges of your fabric if you're not going to have them enclosed in a seam because especially for rayon or things that fray. Anyway, that's your PSA. Now for the bodice, there's gathers. So I literally hand gathered the bodice part and then gathered it and pinned it to fit along the yoke. So that's all I'm doing here. It's not really exciting, but um, I will say it's definitely it's a little tedious, but it's really worth it because then you can really manage how many gathers go where and like the fullness and ratio. And I did repin this a few times actually just to like get it to look exactly how I wanted it. But yeah, I'm actually pretty proud of how this turned out. Okay, I've finished, finished this dress and that I have done all the construction things I needed to do except for I do want to hem, which I technically don't need to. I need to hem this and I need to also finish the zipper because I did the basic zipper insertion, but I want to like do a finishing line along the top of it, if that makes sense. Anyway, here is my dress. I am really pleased with it and like shocked it turned out like how I drew it. Um, I definitely think that like it's a little baggier here than maybe I intended it to be but I also had to take it in a little bit for the zipper um, and uh, I should have made the placket smaller knowing that I was going to insert a zipper <sighs> but you know it's me. I'm new to sewing so anyway it technically still has the parameters of what my final needed to be and after I submit for my final I think I will take this little yoke in a little bit more but it's really not much. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that like, for the real, real talk, I made my sloper when I was really bloated, like at the height of my PMS before my period. Cause I'm like, I kind of needed to like fit me at like all sizes, but especially make sure it fits then. So I feel like maybe, maybe I'll wait to take this in until closer to my next cycle. So I can see, does it still have that kind of a little excessness when I am, my body is just different because it's different throughout the month all every day it's different anyway uh i'm just like really excited that i finished the thing that i did it all on my own and uh patterned it from start to finish and i need to take photos and submit it but i will do that tomorrow because i am tired i'm so tired and ta-da i have changed into my recently washed so it's a little bit more wrinkly dress i do think that my shoulders were a little bit 
longer than I meant them to be. I don't know if it was just the slipperiness of the material when I was cutting it. I do think that it has a little bit to do with some of the things that I feel like didn't match up amazingly in the final thing, but did match up when I was doing small. So I think there's just a couple things like with this fabric, working with it, I would have done differently. But overall, I really like it. I hope this was a useful, fun video for you. I hope that um, it at least also makes flat patterning seem less daunting and terrifying and a little bit more attainable because I know for me, once I started doing it, I was like, oh no, no, this is easy. This is great. Um, I know that I have had frustrations working with patterns out of like some of the big four, their um, envelopes because they don't really fit my body and my waistline and all those things. So getting to work with something that like I can dictate how it's going to fit was really, really cool. And I think something that like definitely I'm going to keep pursuing in my fashion studies. So in this video, we only went over a bodice, but stay tuned because I will be going over these puff sleeves and my cute little flare skirt in two other videos. Again, parsing them out so that it's a little bit easier for people to focus in on one part of the garment. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, patrons. You're the whole reason I get to make this content and have the time and bandwidth to do it and share the things that I'm learning through fashion school. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Again, check out my Patreon. Send me a tip on coffee. All those good things help support me or other creators that you follow. Um, just help them on the day to day to make content and to share the things that we love to make. Thank you for joining me and don't forget to make it so.